according to Johannes Brahms, the brain is of great importance in the implementation of these exercises because it commands the whole body and also manages the arm and finger movements. It is up to the pianist's cerebral perception to maintain this connection. This video is an introduction uh, to a comprehensive course dedicated to this beautiful set of exercises. In the course that you might find following the link in the description, I will first introduce you to the most important concepts in the piano plane, in the efficient piano plane, and then explain in detail how to implement this knowledge uh, to, the, to your piano plane, transforming your technique on the example of Brahms exercises. The link to the full course is in the description. And a small announcement, I also do teach online, so if you are interested to work with me privately, please contact me following another link in the description to this video. Quite often people tend to contrapose these exercises to any others, like Hainan, for example, saying something like, oh, Hainan exercises are so stupid and mechanical, you have to play Brahms exercises instead, they will help you to become a great musician. Here I have to repeat myself and say something I already uh, said in the lesson uh, dedicated to the Hainan exercises. If you know what you're doing or if you have a proper instruction, you can benefit a lot even from Hainan exercises, uh, both musically and technically. And in my course dedicated to Hainan exercises, I demonstrate how to do that. But if you don't know how to approach Brahms exercises, you're going to uh, struggle a lot and uh, most probably only damage your playing, your technique. Because these exercises, they are promoting a special type of piano technique that has been established through the 19th century. And that's why many people uh, reasonably say that these exercises are helpful primarily uh, for romantic repertoire. Many of them are composed in such a way that they feature wide hand positions. Uh, that's why they require uh, using the whole arm as a unit. They require us to develop a special kind of plasticity in the arm, uh, shaping with the wrist, freedom in the elbow, uh, usage of the weight of the hand, and many, many other things that are only par partially relevant to classical style. But of course, these exercises are super helpful for any romantic composers like Chopin, Liszt, um, Schumann, Brahms, uh, of course, and also later composers like Debussy, Ravel, even Rachmaninoff. But if these exercises are approached without a clear understanding of physiology of piano playing, they might be rather harmful. And the aim of this course is to help you transform your technique and implement correct motions and get rid of bad habits if you have any. It's important to consider that these exercises, they are not published in the difficulty progression order. Very often people get stumbled upon the exercise number one, uh, which is quite tricky actually. This is not the easiest exercise because it contains two major challenges. Uh, first of all, polar rhythms. Three against four is in a way even more difficult than playing two against three. And even with simpler polar rhythms, uh, most of students already have some problems. And three against four make them drive them crazy already from the very start. And the second issue is fingering. That is, in this exercise, is counterintuitive. In the course, I'm covering this as any other uh, exercise from this set in uh, detail. Uh, speaking about fingering, about coordination of motions, about learning strategies and stuff. But for those of you who are going to make a fatal mistake of not enrolling into the course, following the link in the description, uh, let me just share the fingering for the first exercise, because uh, this is something that is the most important in this exercise, actually. That's why I would suggest you to start working on these exercises, not in the chronological order, but from the exercises that seem to be uh, more intuitively clear and a bit easier, a bit more natural uh, for us. And here are their numbers. So uh, those exercises, in my opinion, are a bit easier. I would strongly suggest to approach these exercises after forming a basic technique, a basic uh, solid technique. And after reaching an at least intermediary level uh, of piano playing, you can continue polishing your technique, continue transforming your technique using Brahms exercise. Therefore, to those students that consider themselves to be a rather beginner 
players. I would suggest to start uh, with my another course dedicated to basics of piano technique in the light of the recent piano playing efficiency knowledge explained on Hainan exercises. And after that, after you have built basic skills and uh, feel more or less confident with them, you can uh, continue with this course that is meant uh, rather for uh, intermediate and advanced piano players. In the course, I'm going to explain in detail how to approach each exercise from the sets, uh, telling you step by step how to approach them, how to master them. But let me just quickly give you a few general suggestions for those of you who are not going to enroll into this course that might uh, otherwise change your life. <laughs> so tip number one, most of these exercises require a natural curve as opposed to intended curve. So intended curve in general, this is not the best way to play piano. However, for some particular spots, like for, for example from Mozart or Bach, might be played with intended curve. But in general, I would suggest you to uh, have a natural curve as a default position. And uh, furthermore, some exercises from the set, well actually many exercises from the set, are um, using wide positions. And in these positions, in extremely wide positions, we, we flatten the fingers even more. So most of exercises you are playing with flattened fingers. But nevertheless, even in such flattened positions, uh, your goal is to avoid tension in the wrist, avoid lifting up the wrist, and nevertheless, finding stability in the knuckles and in the nail joint. Tip number two, we have to properly coordinate motions and avoid any possible stress, any possible tension in the hand, especially while holding some notes, like in the exercise number 16. So any exercises that um, instruct you to hold some notes while playing other notes, like in the exercise number 16. Make sure that you can release your hand and freely move around while holding these notes. That's why actually I would uh, strongly suggest you to first neglect these notes, to play these exercises uh, without them, like playing them normally. coordinating motions and finding uh, some freedom of motion uh, in without those slow notes and then make a proper gap after taking this note. Make sure that you release your hands and then continue. The goal of these exercises is to develop a technique that would help you to uh, not just feel better, but also sound better. Like for example in the uh, exercise number 8, if you would play that with isolated fingers, uh, holding your arms in a rather static way, it sounds like that because I am working with uh, isolated fingers and my arms are quite static. But if I would deblock my arms, if I would allow my elbows to follow the wrist and vice versa, and if I will shape these um, waves with, with the wrist and use some flexibility, it will immediately sound already uh, much more musical. Although in the course, uh, of course, uh, we will go further than that. I will also give you very precise uh, suggestions what to listen to, how to develop your ear control and how to make your phrasing, your touche, uh, your color palette on piano uh, much more diverse and much more suitable for romantic repertoire. And the last tip for uh, this small introductional video, whenever we have position changes, like for example in the exercise number five, you have to first concentrate on plasticity of motion between positions and absolute tension release between positions. So whenever you move from position to position, like in this exercise, whenever you reach the end of position, which, uh, which is always two notes in this case, because we have broken octaves and then another octave, you first release your hands completely and then you use the first note of the next position as a leading point. So you lean on the first note 
and you release your hands after the second one and you move your hands absolutely while being absolutely relaxed in your hands. Just imagine that as soon as you play the last note of the hand position, your fingers become numb, absolutely numb. You don't feel them. And someone replaces your hand toward the next hand position. So. And then you focus the tips of the fingers only when you are next, uh, already hitting the next key, the next hand position. I wish you a great learning experience and see you in the course.